Hello, welcome back. Mike from Canavan Wealth covering a website blog article. This is on interest rates. Talked about this a lot. This is the topic going on in the financial world for the last year. And that's exactly what the article is about. A full year of interest rate hikes from the Fed. So this article talks about, this came out back in March, um, about how exactly a year ago we started the this historically aggressive, unprecedented they call a monetary tightening cycle, which is a fancy way of saying raising interest rates. And then they talk about it, you know, the context of, you know, why all of this happened, the success and challenge. It has it, the whole reason for this was I, ideally to bring down inflation. Has inflation come out? The CPI report just came out yesterday. Uh, inflation, you know, the big number has been coming down. Core inflation does appear to be getting a little sticky, although core inflation will typically lag um, regular inflation. Core inflation meaning it doesn't include gas and food because the the impact of fuel affects everything, uh, and you know, consumer goods that were effectively produced on higher fuel are just now hitting markets in some era in some markets. So. Uh, we would expect core inflation to lag a little bit, but we really don't know whether this goal from the Fed to get inflation back below 2% and then ideally bring interest rates back down below 2%, how long that's going to take. It, you know, They talk here about will there be additional rate hikes, banking, everything going on with the banking crisis, high cost of living. Will there be additional rate hikes? There was a recent announcement from the Fed where they said a May interest rate hike was on the table. Now, that's interesting language because on the table, I think, implies that there is a possibility of no interest rate hike and that that is kind of the base assumption. If, if, if an interest rate hike is on the table, then there's something else on the table, which is no interest rate hike. And if we did not have an interest rate hike, in May, and maybe our next one was in July or something. I think I think that would be a strong signal that we are getting close to the the end of this, and we would expect kind of a quarter raise. And then maybe we get one more quarter raise in September. I think markets would view that very favorably, although only time will tell. And when it comes to the banking crisis, um, that is not over. We are still in this. You know, the indexes that track regional banks are still very depressed. Um, I think. It's blue skies ahead, but uh, too early to kind of declare victory on that. Um, what I really want to talk about this is about this time period. I think it is just human nature to try and believe that whatever time period we live in is extraordinary and kind of def a defining time period when a lot of that, <clears throat> you know, you look back in history and, um, you know, political division, Cold War type stuff. This has, we've seen this before. Um, they, it is, you know, a, a particular interesting time, but and we certainly have lived through some defining moments. Certainly, you know, for anyone watching this video, I'm sure they've viewed 9-11, the 2008 global financial crisis, COVID uh, as very much defining moments of kind of the human experience. I would say that right now with these interest rates, specifically from a monetary policy and an economic future, we are in what I would consider a transitionary period. So the last 14 years, whatever, however you want to measure it from the 2008 global financial crisis really to now, I think we will look at as you know a, a period where it all kind of made sense and various things. And then we have this time period, which is largely, you know, kind of the fallout from COVID, both supply chain disruption and stimulus, whether you thought it was necessary or not, you know, this kind of influx of cash into the economy. Um, this, the next 10 to 14 years, although there will be lots of valuable lessons we learned from post nine or post 2008 global financial crisis, this next 10, 14 years, I think is going to look fundamentally different and will largely be defined as kind of a different financial economic time period. And a lot of that is going to come down to where interest rates fall out 12 to 18 months from now. And anyone who thinks that they know where that is going to be, I think is uh, off their rocker because there is just too many unknowns right now. There's always very little uncertainty about the future. 
of of the economy and the markets and things along those lines. But where interest rates will fall out and kind of how the bond market compares to the stock market and things like that is is very, very uncertain. It's not that I don't think the markets will go up. I do believe the markets will go up over the next 12 to 18 months. It's that what is the investing landscape going to look like and how much of that is going to look like the last 10 to 14 years and how much of that is going to be its own new animal. So we will talk about that a lot on the channel here. That's a good time to pull up my little closing slide here. Transitional time period based on unprecedented increases in the Fed funds rates. Actually, not that the Fed funds rate went so high. It actually didn't go that high. It's how fast it went there. What that is going to do to the future, uh, only time will tell. But it is going to be a very different future, I believe, than it was for the last 10 years. Uh, everything on the slide, if you like the video, please like it. If you want to see more content like that, please subscribe. We have a some webinar every month. I hope this has been informative. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.